Welcome back to another episode of How a Shark Thinks. This time we'll be analyzing two games with Hammerhead, a powerful early game shark with much faster killing times than pretty much all the sharks. Our first game takes place on Olmec, a map that strongly favors Hammerhead. Hammerhead is a lunger, definitely not a sprinter with how quickly it drains his stamina bar. As with every game, we're going to check on stragglers, so we'll take the back entrance to the safe room. There's one right there, and he's right against the wall. We'll get out immediately with little damage and prepare for another attack, and a diver just... materializes out of the water? He is the one. Regardless, we'll kill him on the frame of the entrance. We're going right back in, keeping up the aggression. Missed the first diver, but I hit Steve, so that's still nice. I go for the second diver instead. Now, since my lunge won't have enough momentum, I need to sprint thrash him into a surface. The question is, which one? The answer is pretty simple. We're not taking the floor, because at this angle, we're going to be too close to the floor and we'll hit at a really odd angle, which will result in terrible damage. Instead, I'm choosing to take him to the ceiling, because there's enough distance to accumulate momentum with sprinting, and I can adjust my angle to be a perfect 90 degrees this way. That's optimal damage. I tried to take out the pad while I targeted my teammate, but I got stuck on this wall. That's okay, because we're going to keep up the assault and keep restricting the diver team's breathing room. I pick up both Hangry and Nimblefin to get back to the safe room as soon as I can. No need to waste time, we'll charge right in, even if our stamina isn't full. Our ability gives us enough stamina for the next lunge every time we slam a surface during the 4 seconds it is active, which means whether our stamina bar is full or not is of little concern to us. All that matters is that the divers are constantly pressed with relentless aggression. After killing this diver, I kill this pat as well since it has a long battery lifetime of 80 seconds. Don't want that constantly melting my health bar every time I go in. We get a good angle on this diver against the wall, so we'll go for them right away, slowly turning to the right to choose my next target. I'm slowly ascending here to get a better angle on the top diver, and so I can smoothly mash them against that wall right there. After this diver is killed, I aim downwards and do what's called a slide against the floor, mainly to get back to the center of the room to catch the last remaining diver or exit depending on what happens to my health. Since we still got plenty of health, we take the last diver and get out for healing. We're grabbing one of the divers in the corner here while the teammate takes care of the other. Since we are really close to the wall and the ceiling, the logical decision is to pummel them into the floor. As soon as we see the mine, we lunge under it to trigger it before it bites us back later. As soon as the next diver breaks their spawn, we're going right back in. The goblin grabs my target, but dies without killing them, so I'm going to finish the job. I know there's divers watching from the corner, so I immediately go for whoever is there. Since they're already in a corner, I get my max damage pretty easily. This diver tries to ascend and create distance between himself and me while he fires. A valid tactic had it not been for the part of the building behind him, both limiting his backpedaling and guaranteeing my maximum damage. Luckily, we heal just in time to intercept their transition. The one against the wall is my obvious target. Next up is this diver right here. The question remains where to slam them.
We're going powerful tail so our hammerhead has a lot more flexibility and range inside the room instead of being restricted to sprinting. We're also upgrading the ability to provide healing on top of the stamina boost. With powerful tail it is an option to simply kidnap a diver out of the pat's line of sight. I'm choosing to destroy the pat anyway to cover the possibility of the divers changing into positions that are not easy to escape from pat with. Pats last too long to just ignore, especially considering that Hammerhead is one of the slower sharks and our teammate Goblin is a sprinter as well. A diver comes out of spawn protection right in front of me, so I choose him as a target out of convenience. He managed to put a mine before I can grab him. I'm going to lunge upwards because it has enough distance for me to max out my damage and is far enough to avoid the mines triggering after it becomes armed. At this point, being poisoned seems like certain death, but it's really not. Since we have enough time for a slam, and our ability is still active, we'll stall our death by healing. These couple of slams with the ability gave us enough time to neutralize the toxic. We narrowly got away with that one. A screen gets put down as soon as we attempt an attack here, but it's been put down too late. I already know a diver is somewhere up in this corner, just gotta hunt them down in the screen. It's hard to see their skin with the dark background giving a little contrast, but do you see that right there? That's their flashlight, and that's how I found them. I also know that a diver was sitting in the corner next to Steve, and their gunfire lights them up and confirms their position. Since they're also next to the shark screen, we'll kill two birds with one stone. Since these walls here are way too close, we need to slam him into a distant one to get max damage. Any of them should do, so long as they have a clear exit. A diver is approaching for a 1v1. I've got a lot of health still remaining, so I feel confident about taking this one on. I win the duel, but I get stuck trying to make my exit and then subsequently get killed by a mine I didn't see. I choose blindside so it's easier to make efficient attacks. Having blindsight makes it easier to engage and easier to adjust your trajectory for a better slam angle, thus improving your damage. I grab this diver in front of the pad and curve a bit more downwards for more damage, then immediately take out the pad. Next target is the one set up all nice and comfy, right in front of a wall. This one right here was really a brain fart. I forgot about the fourth diver entirely. Had I remembered them, I would have lunged left since bleeding doesn't do that much damage to a hammerhead, and I've got too much HP for it to kill me, and then I can get rid of the bleeding there when I've broken line of sight. I pick up Vitalized Frenzy because getting a kill as hammerhead is not difficult given how fast it kills in rooms, 
Having the stamina boost and health lasting even longer is pretty good. If you want even more stamina in a shorter amount of time without relying on slams or kills, rather than a longer duration for your healing and stamina bonuses, you can always swap Vitalize Frenzy out for Adrenal Glands. It's a risky move to attack a clump of divers in the hallway, since all of them firing at you in there would mean lots of damage or death. But succeeding would put you in a really good position, since you go on to the safe room behind them and you can very easily break line of sight with the rest of them. We go for the risky lunge and it works out in the end. The hammerhead is a heavy shark, meaning it breaks walls in two charges. We're going to surprise this diver here by sprinting into the wall and then immediately lunging afterwards, basically insta-breaking the wall and catching them off guard. Forgot to use my ability there, but we still got the kill. This diver is sitting right next to their pat, so we'll grab them and break their pat in one lunge. We break the other pat before it melts us, but it already did a lot of damage, and our healing is not enough to keep us alive against toxic, bleed, and more bullets coming our way. We still took out two pats and a diver, so it's a favorable exchange. On to the next game. This one takes place on Stash, and we're still going with Hammerhead. As per usual, we're checking for stragglers. One of them didn't make it into the safe in time, so we'll slam them into the side barricade. Creating some distance so I can sprint lunge into this breakable. You can also just lunge through it, it takes one hit from a hammerhead to break. Very awkward whiff. We'll try and slam them onto the top of the doorframe and maybe get away with another kill. Luckily enough, we do. Just as before, we're taking Hangry to keep the early game pressure up. We pick this diver off and slide to the right onto the next wall. I'm not risking another kill with this much health, so we'll go heal off first. Whiffed my first lunge, and I got damaged too much to finish off the kill. That's alright, since we can now get Nimblefinned and get back even faster. Steve can be used as a surface too. I take the most accessible diver in front of me immediately look over to the divers watching him from up there. This third pick was really badly done, but it was thankfully the diver I had damaged beforehand, so the thrash damage is enough. Not enough HP to get the kill, but that's alright. We get Powerful Tail now. Breakables can also be used as surfaces. I carry this one out since it lets me have a really good escape. We quickly heal the Toxic off and get right back to it. Can't stay away for too long. They threw flares on both sides, but this one is easier to bypass since it's not so far out of the safe room. I aim for the diver in front of me. The reason is so I can slam him onto the wall where Steve was at, and then immediately chain another slam onto these steel bars, which count as a different surface entirely. This leads to a double slam and a sweet kill time of 0.2 seconds. Our teammate dies with a diver in their jaws, but that diver will remain disarmed for a second or two, so he immediately killed the other one. Missed my lunge, no ability to get stamina back, I'll just take this death and come back better. Next on the list is upgrading the ability. As soon as they come through that door, they're positioned nicely near the floor so we can get off a lot of damage. After the first kill, I grab another diver and sprint upwards while my lunge is on cooldown. Just because lunging is better than sprinting doesn't mean you can't use both, and Hammerhead gives you plenty of stamina to do what you want with it, even if the stamina cost for sprinting is rough. And now, we can reliably heal ourselves independent of seals. That diver is positioned suitably for a floor slam. After them, we go for the one in the corner, our next closest target. After that, we'll take the next closest diver we can see. Keep trying to chain kill wherever and whenever you can. The more aggressive the hammerhead, the more difficult it is for divers to deal with, and the more your teammate benefits from your strong leading. Blindside next makes grabbing and slamming all the easier. 
It can be risky for tank sharks to hit shark screens because of their sluggishness, often putting them in bad positions, but we'll keep leading anyway. First target I see is a diver paying attention in the wrong direction. Once they're taken care of, we take the next closest target. We lunge upwards to temporarily break line of sight above the platform. Even though our health is low, Hammerhead has a pretty low MHR as well. We can still keep going. This allows our relatively new white tip to secure the kill on the 4th, since all the attention has been focused on us. This diver is in the top part of the safe. The other divers don't even have decent coverage of him. We'll take him out first. This next diver ascends to counterattack. Unfortunately, it puts him in a position that could be easily taken away from the other diver's line of sight. Another diver ascends to shoot, who are also positioned optimally for us to make an escape. So we curve our lunge, slam them into the ceiling, and then lunge away. This one is focused on our teammate. Ah, you know what? We can go for one more. Even if our health was below the MHR, the diver is so close to a surface, the heal from our ability would actually take place before his stab can connect, so we'll take it. We escape, and we're low on health. While the ability is up, I'll find two walls and alternate between slamming them to maximize my healing. That way, I don't need to swim far away for seals, and I can stay present close to the safe rooms. Much better. We'll wait just a bit for the ability to come back before going in. Really bad attack here. Divers were already facing this way, so they get their shots off and kill me before I can get a kill. That's alright. Now we can buy Placoid Scales for their Toxic Rounds, and Vitalize Frenzy as well. I get killed going for the Shark Screen, but it's worth it. Since we have a big life ticket advantage, it won't hurt to throw one to save us time. Now although it would make sense to grab that diver and go upwards, I think that's too close in front of the other diver's line of sight. Instead, I take him downwards, away from the two divers behind, and close to the other diver down below, so I can make it easier to go for the next target. He was low enough on health to die to thrashing, but I lunged anyway to get some healing off. After I kill the third diver, I reactivate my ability and make my escape, slamming on surfaces on the way to sustain my health and tank the shots better. We can outheal the toxic on us, even if we didn't have placoid scales. Let's go ahead and do that. That's a better looking health bar, and that's probably a very confused white tip. A shark screen comes up, but we already saw our target. As soon as we grab another diver, we lunge at the shark screen since it's close to other surfaces. We both dealt max damage and took the screen out. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you in your sharkly endeavors.